All right, welcome back everybody. We are gonna go through another uh, window today or tool called the Pathfinder tool. And it's gonna let us do some cool things with our shapes. So let's get going by creating a new document. Same old thing here. I'm gonna go for letter. If I go to print, I can find it there. That's also under my recent because I've used it recently and you might have as well if you're following along with these. So I'm gonna go to print, go to letter, and make it landscape. I'm gonna hit create and let's get the Pathfinder uh, window out. So I'm going to go to window and I'm going to go to Pathfinder right there. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pull it just off of the side here. And I've got all these buttons here, the Pathfinder tool. Okay, a lot of different things, but I want to um, try them all out and see what they do. Okay, and see what can help us and what, you know, won't be as useful. Some of these, I, I basically only use two of them. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I mostly, 90% of the time, uh, use these top two and then the other ones uh, only occasionally. But let's kind of set it up. So we're gonna set this up by creating two shapes. Okay, so I'm gonna create a rectangle. And I don't wanna make it too big because we're gonna actually do uh, four of these across and then we're gonna do six of these on the bottom so we can see what they do to each one. Now let's take our rectangle and let's give it a fill color and let's give it a stroke. I'll just leave it a black stroke. Okay. So that will be, I'm gonna make it a little bit, let's see, let's make this a little thinner. Okay. That's our first shape. Okay. I'm going to zoom in now, but that's about as big as I want you to have it on the page when you make yours. We might need to make it smaller. We'll see. Okay, next I want to make a ellipse tool. Okay, I'm gonna make a circle and I'll just make this a perfect circle. So I'm gonna hold down, hopefully you remember shift as I make this. So even in the middle, if I start making it, I can hold down shift at any point. But I don't wanna make it too big. I wanna make it so it'll easily fit within this rectangle. So we wanna see the difference that happens to these things and how they get uh, changed. So we're gonna change this to have a different color. So I'm gonna change this to be a green color and then I want to change the stroke as well, just so we can clearly see what happens to this. Okay, I'll make it orange there. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to overlap this. So I'm going to take my circle, I'm going to move it on top, and I'll just line it up because I can. I'll line it up right in the middle there. And I have my intersect lines to tell me that that's perfectly lined up with my path and the middle of the shape. And I'll let go there. Okay. So here we are. This is our basic kind of thing we're going to use. But let's make more of them. So check this out. We're going to duplicate it very easily. I'm going to select it with a black arrow. Right? V again is the shortcut to the black arrow. I'm going to drag a box over both of them. Okay, I could select one and it would just move that one. But I don't want to do that. I want to drag this black arrow over um, both shapes. And it can you can get multiple shapes. Now I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to, now you got to use two hands here. Okay. So I've got them both selected. I'm going to hold down option on the keyboard. I'm going to drag out and it's making a copy, but I want to keep it in line with my previous set of shapes. So I'm going to hold shift, right? And now it's going to snap in place. So I can, again, I can snap it out just like before when we were using the, uh, the white arrow to manipulate a shape and holding shift. But if I, I have a lot of leeway where I can keep it in line when I move my cursor. See, it's still in, in line. And I'm going to let go. And then I'm going to let go of uh, my buttons on the keyboard. And now I've got a duplicated set of shapes. Okay. Now, let's do it again. This time I'm going to grab both sets. I'm going to hold down Option. And I'm going to hold down shift now and I'm going to move them out from each other and let go. All right. Now, uh, this is going to, these shapes are here to experiment with these four buttons. So we're going to select these and hit the button and see what it does and do the same thing with the four, uh, the four of them. But I also want to do it with these uh, tools in the bottom of this pathfinder window and there's six of them. So let's do this. I'm going to grab all of these. Okay, I'm now going to hold down Option, 
And you can see, I don't know if I pointed this out, I don't think I did. When I hold down Option and it's going to duplicate, I get this doubling of this arrow, the cursor arrow. And it turns to a black and white arrow. And that's how I know it's going to duplicate it. So when I grab it, I'm duplicating. Um, now again, I can move it wherever, but I'm going to keep it nice and neat. Hold down Shift. And then let go. Okay? So now I've got uh, eight of them, but I still need two more. So just one more time. I'm going to go ahead. Now watch. I'm going to go off the page here because um, I made these a little too big, but that's okay. I'm gonna select just two of them now. I'm gonna grab them. Nope, sorry, wrong thing. I'm gonna hold down Option, then I'm gonna grab them, and then I'm gonna hold Shift, and there it is. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom out now with Command minus, right? And I'm using my hand, my uh, off hand, my keyboard hand to do that. And you can see it's off the page. You can totally put things off the page here, put them on, put them off. Um, it's kind of a good, you know, easy, um, well, I don't know, easy. It's a workspace, let's call it that. It's like a, a desk where I can have some things I have on the page, some things I save for later, move things on and off as I need to. But I wanna fit this on the page just because I wanna show you how. Uh, so let's go ahead and select all of them. So I got my black arrow, I'm gonna drag this cursor over all the shapes and I'm going to make them smaller. But look, I, I, there's a problem here. This is This is bad. Okay, I grabbed this without holding shift. I wanted to show you what it does, it distorts things. We don't ever want to distort things. So I'm hitting Command Z to get rid of that. Uh, we don't ever want to distort things unintentionally, okay? Um, very sloppy, very amateur thing to do. It's just like a telltale sign that you don't know how to use this program. So in order to prevent that, when we size this down, we're gonna hold down shift. There we go. And I almost wish they did the opposite, that they had it so you had to hold shift to distort it, that the default was to keep it in proportion. And uh, they have made a change to Photoshop where that is now the case. Um, you have to uh, intentionally distort it, um, but not an Illustrator. Okay, so anyways, I got this the right size by grabbing them all and resizing them using shift so they fit on my page. Okay, now it's time to experiment with the Pathfinder tool. So we're gonna um, select this first set of boxes and I'm dragging again a selection with my black arrow and making sure it goes over these two shapes. I don't wanna get more shapes. I just wanna get these two. Okay, and I can see that these are the two that are selected. I'm gonna zoom in now. I can see that these are the two that's, that are selected because they have this, the, the path is shown up, it's shown blue right here, okay? So, I'm gonna hit this first, well, I have these selected. Okay, now notice that the um, the circle is on top of the square, because that's gonna dictate how things happen uh, on some of these. I'm gonna hit this first button, and look what it does. First button right here joins the shapes together. I have a new shape, right? Okay, now I can take this shape, I can manipulate it, I can do all sorts of things, I can take and you know move things around. It's just a brand new shape, all right? That's all it is. Let's just check out what the next one does. The next button over subtracts the circle from that shape. All right, that's cool. I get this nice little perfect cut out uh, circle there and just move right along. We're just we're creating new shapes here. So I'm gonna select these uh, next set, the next set here and hit the next button over, the third one uh, from the left. And look at that. It keeps the part that is overlapped. All right, and I can create a new shape that way. And I got a little uh, almost half circle thing there. Move right along, select those shapes here. Let's hit the last of these top row buttons and it does the opposite, right? So it subtracts what's overlapping. Okay, now this may seem very basic and you know simple, but with these things, I can really create a lot of cool things and a lot of cool logos. And this is just a basic use of it here, but this really helps create these perfectly clean looking cuts and shapes and all sorts of things that we can do um, using these tools, okay? And we wanna make some logos and stuff like that. Okay, let's go down to the next row. A little different, this is, a, this is a shapes mode and this is a pathfinders mode on the bottom. So it's gonna look a little different, but we'll see. So let's just do them all and then we'll go and inspect them with the white arrow. So I'm gonna hit this first one here and all that I've noticed so far is that I've got a line going across there. Okay, we're gonna leave that for now. Let's just go ahead and do the next one. All right, something happened. The uh, stroke went away, so that's kind of the main thing I've noticed now. 
but we'll see more soon. Next one, okay, looks very similar. Let's do this one. Now this is one, two, three, fourth one over. One, two, three, four, there we go. All right, that looks very similar to what I had go on here, but the circle's still, I don't know. So we'll, we'll check it out. Okay, last one. Okay, looks kind of similar to this. I only kept that part. So let's inspect them a little more. Again, I mostly use these top four, but let's just check this out in case we need this at some point. So I'm gonna get the white arrow now because when I get the black arrow, see it's still selecting the whole thing here. It considers it one whole thing, but with a white arrow, now I'm gonna click on the color. That way I can just get this individual part here and look what it did. I'm gonna hold shift there. It broke this all up. Whoops, let's move that. There we go. So it broke it all up. So it kind of did a similar thing to this, but it kept the circle and just broke every path up where it was crossing. All right, let's check this one out here. Okay, it looks kind of similar. It didn't cut up the paths. It it cut out the circle from the shape here. Now let's see what I can, can I add a stroke now to this? Of course I can, right? Let me see if I can change the color of that stroke there. Whoops. I got the black arrow, hold on. So okay, uh, something to show you real quick. So I've got an orange stroke selected for some reason, but I was with a black arrow, so check this out. When I was a black arrow, and I selected it, it got both things still. So it considers these one shape, and we'll look more at that and we get into layers uh, soon, but I, I don't wanna bog you down with that yet. Um, to get just the top one, I needed to make sure I grabbed just the top one with a white arrow. Now I can kind of change that one. And oh, oh, uh, <laughs> one more thing I wanted to show you was that when I didn't do that and I had the black arrow selected and it had both of them selected, you can see question marks here because I've got two colors selected and one has a stroke, one doesn't. So it's got these question marks, right? And that let me know, oh, I didn't have just one selected. Let's go ahead and change that to black so we can see it, make this a little bigger. All right, anyway, so I can still add a stroke to it and all that, just wanted to show you that you can. I'm gonna go to the, the little stroke box here and, and go to the um, the white box with a slash, which means no stroke, and get it back to how it was. Okay, white arrow. Next one, let's inspect this one here. Okay, it looks just about the same. Um, same th when I select it, they look about the same. So I'm not sure what the difference is here, and I haven't really needed to use it, so I haven't inspected much further, but that's what that did. Similar thing. Okay, this one, look at this. So I've got the uh, overlapping part colored, and then it's created something different for the bottom. Well, let's take a look at it. It's created a path. I don't know, let me see if I can grab this separately now. Nope, I can't, still join together into one shape. Let me try and grab this. So I can move that, but I still have this path here. It just has no fill or stroke applied to it. So that's why it looks like that. Now I can add a stroke um, or a uh, fill to it, but I had to add it, so let's see. So that's how it comes. So the, the uh, this path was kept, but not given a uh, fill or stroke. Well, this one has given a fill, but they're still both there. Okay, last one. Let's look at this one. Nope, I'm sorry, two more. Not the last one. All right, this one just did the opposite of this, looks like to me. Interesting. All right, and this one here. Okay, it kept the shape, kept the circle, What's the deal? Not sure. <laughs> but again, uh, I rarely use these uh, down here. I use the top ones all the time. All right, just wanted to show you what they all do, even if some of them I don't find super useful, uh, you may have a use for them at some point. It just kind of depends on what tool you need for the job you're doing. All right, well that about covers it for what I wanted to show you on how the Pathfinder works. And stay tuned for the next video and we'll keep expanding uh, our knowledge of how to create and manipulate shapes. See you next time.